morning. morning. Mass this morning is offered for the repose of the soul of Henry de Stefano. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call all sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that the coming solemnity of your Son may bestow healing upon us in this present life and bring us the rewards of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. I am the Lord, there is no other. I form the light and create the darkness. I make well-being and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. Let justice descend, O heavens, like dew from above, like gentle rain, let the skies drop it down. Let the earth open and salvation bud forth. Let justice also spring up. I, the Lord, have created this. For thus says the Lord, the creator of the heavens, who is God, designer and maker of the earth who established it, not creating it to be a waste, but designing it to be lived in. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Who announced this from the beginning and foretold it from of old? Was it not I, the Lord, besides whom there is no other God. There is no just and saving God but me. Turn to me and be safe, all you ends of the earth, for I am God, there is no other God. By myself I swear, uttering my just decree in my unalterable world, word. To me every knee shall bend, by me every tongue shall swear saying, Only in the Lord are just deeds and power. Before him in shame shall come all who vent their anger against him. In the Lord shall be the vindication and the glory of all the descendants of Israel. The word of the Lord. Let the clouds rain down the just one and the earth bring forth a savior. Let the clouds rain down the just one, and the earth bring forth a Savior. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace to his people. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Let the clouds rain down the just one. Kindness and truth shall meet justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Let the clouds rain down the just one, and the earth bring forth a Savior. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him, and salvation along the way of his steps. Let the clouds rain down the just one, and the earth bring forth a Savior. The Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, Jesus summoned two of his disciples and sent them. I'm sorry. At that time, John summoned two of his disciples and sent them to the Lord to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? When the men came to the Lord, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to, to you to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? At that time, Jesus cured many of their diseases, sufferings, and evil spirits. He also granted sight to many who were blind. And Jesus said to them in reply, Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have the good news proclaimed to them, and blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. The Gospel of the Lord. So I think in our proximate preparation for the celebration of Christmas, for the coming of our Savior, we're challenged today to somehow reconcile the two realities that we know about God. The most familiar and the one that we probably meditate on the most is Jesus, the Son of God who has, has come. And as he says to the, to the disciples of John the Baptist today, he is the fulfillment because the prophecies all said that when the Messiah came, all of these things would come to pass with regard to the blind, the lame, those who are sick, those who are deaf, those who are poor, that they're, 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 they will be fulfilled, this fulfillment promise. We recognize that right away in Jesus because he's visible, correct? But the other side of that that we need to reconcile with, I think, is the one that is unseen, the reality of God, who is completely other than we are. So in the beginning, in the first reading today in Isaiah, the Lord is kind of defining who he is, isn't he? I am the Lord, there is no other. I form the light, I create the darkness. I make well-being and create woe. The creator who is God, the designer, the maker of the earth, not creating it to be a waste, but to be lived in. It's, a, it's, it's, this, it's this other aspect of God who is completely unapproachable, completely unknown to us in a certain sense because he is before all else that is. He is the one by whom all of this is made. Um, one, of the, one of the simplest things you can say about God even, and, and I, I, I think that this is the one thing, maybe the hardest thing to get our minds around is he's not a being. He is being. And somehow that being is relatable. So that being is a person, but in a certain sense, not like any other person that we've ever known, certainly completely other than we are. And if we could sit in this meditation for a little while and think about what, that actually, what this actually means to us, we would recognize that some, this, this reality of being itself, the ground of all existence, God, has decided to make a friend out of you. He's decided to stoop down and become you. It's unimaginable, really. If you, if you try to reconcile the two in your mind, you recognize that it is the definition of mercy. It is the definition of complete love which is what we're preparing to celebrate, isn't it, at Christmas? This idea that what is really not possible, certainly from our perspective, is what God wills. And he is coming. We are about to receive him. We are about to receive being itself. We are about to discover what it means to be in relationship with someone or, yeah, someone, because, he, because God is a person, Jesus is a person, to have a relationship with someone that is completely not in our control. We can't tell Jesus what to do. We can't, 
We can't determine what the outcome of this is. All we can do is enter into it with faith and decide that we will receive him when he comes. It's astounding, isn't it, to think about that this way, that, that the unapproachable creator of light and all, be, and all that we know in, in existence has done all of this for a purpose, and that purpose is to be with us. to him. We pray to the Lord. But those in a position of power and influence in the world, that they may act in kindness and truth, so that justice and peace may prevail. We pray to the Lord. For all of us waiting for justice to descend like gentle rain, and for the earth to open and bud forth a Savior, that God may enlarge our desire and answer it with his own divine coming. We pray to the Lord. For the sick, for the poor, for those who are oppressed, that Jesus who cured diseases and afflictions in his own day may respond to our prayers on their behalf. We pray to the Lord. That God, during these Advent days, may welcome into, God, into his kingdom our loved ones who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith. We pray to the Lord. And for all those intentions we now hold in the silence of our hearts. For these we pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, in this time of waiting, we are confident in your love. Hear and answer our prayers through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Let us pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, 
We who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace.